Hello, I'm Jeremiah Castile, and welcome to Men of Steel. We're coming to you from Black Watch Sports Performance here in Birmingham, Alabama, and my co-host is Simeon Castile. Guys, we're so excited to bring you our first episode of Men of Steel. Uh, like my dad said, I'm Simeon Castile, one of his uh, three sons. Um, both of us are former defensive backs at the University of Alabama. And on our show, uh, we're going to be tackling three subjects, uh, faith, family, and football. Um, but on this first episode, we wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit of background on us so you guys could get to know us. Um, and so we're just going to kind of just hop right in. Um, anybody that knows our family knows that uh, my dad, number one, he's an awesome guy, a uh, great football player. Um, but a lot of people don't know his background and where he grew up and how hard it was. Um, so we kind of want to dig into that a little bit. Um, so, Dad, uh, where are you from? Tell them about the great metropolis of Phoenix <laughs> City. <laughs> well, actually, Simi, I'm originally from Columbus, Georgia. My family, I was born in Columbus, Georgia, and then we moved to Phoenix City, Alabama. Uh, I'm number eight of nine children. Uh, and uh, None of my uh, sisters and brothers uh, older than me really participated in sports. So I didn't have, I didn't see older sister siblings that was involved in sports. Uh, one of the things that uh, we had uh, that I think a lot of people probably can relate to today is we, there was a, a growing in, up in a low income housing areas, uh, there was alcoholism and, and, and drug use. Yeah. Um, and to touch on that, I guess, um, because we can't, well, I say we, my brothers and sisters and I can't relate to having a mom who was an alcoholic or a dad who was an alcoholic. Um, how do you feel like having to deal with that at such a young age um, affected you as a, as a kid growing up? Well, it affected me, but I like to look at it from the positive. That is, it motivated me to do something about the circumstances and situations which I, I was living in. And uh, so I, I really have to give uh, the, the Lord the credit for that. And that is uh, at an early age, I, I felt like God started drawing me to him when I was in middle school. Some of the um, how I acted out in school, the trouble I got in, the fights I got in, uh, it came from what I saw at home. But God used that. And so when I was uh, in my eighth grade year of uh, the summer of my eighth grade year, uh, 1974, never forget it. Uh, the Lord started drawing me, and I went to a little Baptist church called Pleasant Grove Baptist Church. There, uh, four or five doors down from my house, and for the first time in my life, I heard the gospel. And that is that God the Father loved me through His Son Jesus, and I had never heard. My parents didn't communicate to us that they loved us, yeah. so I didn't hear that. And when I heard that for the first time, I received it, and that faith, uh, my faith walk started. At that point, and God uh, showed me that I had some athletic ability, football, basketball, track and field. And yes. I started pursuing those things to get a scholarship. Well, I can tell you, me personally, um, I'm glad <laughs> that you came to know the Lord because he moved. Um, he led you to move from Phoenix City <laughs> to Birmingham uh, to raise us. And that's when you started working at Briarwood. Um, all six of us uh, were able to go to Briarwood, get a great education. But also, I'm glad um, just because of the man um, that, you know, you have become, uh, the father that you were able to be to us and are continuing to be um, to us. Um, a lot of people might not know my dad was uh, my high school uh, football coach for two years um, at Briarwood. And man, I tell you, he was so hard uh, <laughs> on me. Um, but it, did, it really didn't start there. Um, and I can remember when we were living in Phoenix City and uh, he made my older brother and I run from my grandmother's house to the barbershop. Uh, just to get our hair cut, and we were crying the whole way. Uh, you remember that? <laughs> Let me, uh, you know, that philosophy of, of uh, I got that from Coach Brian. You know, I, I went to the University of Alabama in 1979 as a freshman and played for, for Coach Brian. And the la Coach Brian's last four years of college ball, I actually played, played in his last game. Yeah. 
actually was the MVP of Coach Bryant's last game, which was the 1982 Liberty Bowl. Game. Okay, let me stop you right there. <laughs> for you guys, for all you young cats don't that do not um, that don't date back that long, um, if you guys need to go pull up the film. The dude balled out. What you had? Three interceptions. Three interceptions. Yeah. One fu- one caused fumble. fumble. Um, yes. And they actually played one of those uh, um, at Alabama. I know they used to on the pre-game. video pregame video. They show one of his hits um, from that game. So all you young cats, go look it up. Nineteen eighty two Liberty Bowl. Liberty Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. And and so my philosophy on how I was going to raise uh, you all, I really got from Coach Bryant. He be he come in. The, in the meetings and uh, he say stuff like, you know, it, it, almost every day he had some type of say mm-hmm. that you could take and walk away with. Like one of them was uh, men just get a little bit better. Yeah. So he do like this on a good old hot August two day, you know, and just say, Hey, just get this much better. Well, one of them was from how I, uh, well, I would get you all up early is yeah. he said, he said, men, you gotta be, working when your opponent's sleeping. <laughs> so <laughs> I took that to heart. And, okay, yeah. <laughs> I raise my children. I'm going to teach them to get up early. And uh, so that's why I got that philosophy. And from. he is not lying. Um, as soon as me and Tim told my dad that we wanted to play football, it was probably around like uh, seven. Well, we wanted to play earlier than that. He just didn't let us. He didn't let us play Pee Wee. We didn't start until we were in seventh grade. Um, but literally like from our seventh grade year, through high school, I mean, in the summers, we were up like 5, 30, 6 o'clock uh, at the track, man. Um, and it would be me, Tim, and my dad um, out there early getting it. You, you know never had a summer off. I didn't I didn't give you all a summer off. No. Not if you had a vision and a dream to you, of what you wanted to do. I just felt like you had to outwork your opponent. And I just learned that at, at the University of Alabama under Coach Bryant. Hey, outwork your opponent. And it really did um, pay off, and it just trickled down um, from you, and it kind of just permeated through our family. Um, and you can kind of see how the Lord has blessed our family um, through you. Uh, I mean, Tim um, was a All American in high school. Uh, I was be able to be at All American in high school. We both played at Alabama together. Um, Caleb ended up playing at Alabama. Uh, And then all three of the girls um, able to graduate from the University of Alabama. So um, you can definitely see how the Lord um, just took you and um, placed a vision inside of you. And then you were able to live it out. And the Lord really blessed our family, um, starting with you. Well, I I just think that as we, you know, as you said, our show is going to be about faith, family and football. And we start with faith because we believe that uh, God has blessed me. He blessed our family. And it's that relationship that we have with the Lord and our walk with Jesus. And we want to encourage people that through our life, through our story, that as people watch uh, this, then they can be encouraged that in their faith, they can be encouraged in their family relationships. And that's what I, what I love about us today is, you know, uh, we are, we are a close knit family and that comes from, you know, starting back with the faith that I placed in Jesus as a 13-year-old young boy there in Phoenix City, Alabama. Yeah. Um, and as we uh, go throughout the the show, um, we're going to be taking questions um, so that you guys, so we can interact with you guys. Um, and I think that as we go along, you guys will get to know us and get to find out that everybody has issues, everybody has problems. And we just want to be able to relate how the Lord has helped us um, and kind of encourage you guys as we all play this game called life. Um, So we're going to switch gears a little bit um, and move on to, I guess, um, what everybody loves to talk about here in the South, and that is (laughs) Alabama football. Um, So Alabama, we just wrapped up homecoming. It was a great atmosphere brought back Dixie Dan, uh, Dixieland delight. Uh, the student <laughs> section was rowdy. They stayed throughout the whole game. It was a cool, uh, cool night game. Uh, praise the Lord. Cause we've been dealing with this heat. Um, so we're going to kind of just give you guys a little recap of the game. Um, dad, what did you think, I guess, about the, um, the performance against Missouri? Well, overall, I, I, uh, 
I felt like the performance on defense, that's where I'm going to start every week, okay, because when we do this, I'm a defensive guy. I believe you uh, you, you win championships with defense. No and, doubt, uh, no doubt. So defensively, I, I felt like we really tightened up things uh, uh, versus when, the, when the prior week when we played mm-hmm. Arkansas. So we I just felt like we played with a lot more intensity, focus on defense, um, and we just didn't have – as many miscues, guys just not in place. Yeah. And uh, and actually with uh, Trayvon being out, I feel like that really uh, uh, Savion, Savion Smith stepped, stepped in, yeah. man, and uh, really balled. Uh, yeah. in, ends up with, what, two interceptions mm-hmm. uh, for the game. And so, uh, Trayvon, you better hurry up and get back. <laughs> <laughs> and what they say, you can't make the club in the tub, baby. Um, well, yeah, we obviously, we hope he has a, um, a quick, uh, recovery. Um, I mean, and obviously we're going to have to talk about the op- offense and, and Tua. Uh, I mean, the guy's just having a tremendous season. Um, I know everybody's hearts kind of stopped <laughs> on that slide. Um, hopefully it won't be uh, too serious, but the offense, man, has just been clicking ever since he has stepped into the role as the starting quarterback. And I, I mean, honestly, it's, I mean, it's been fun to watch. And um, I think uh, he's done a great job, not just on the field um, with his play, but just leading those guys. And um, the receiver, I mean, really the skill position, the guys that he has around him, um, I mean, we're loaded. Uh, you can, I know there was one play, uh, who was it, Ruggs took the quick screen and just dart it down the sideline. I know it got called back, but you see that type of athleticism. Um, and it's not just from one guy. Uh, you got rugs, obviously, Waddle out there like the human joystick. Uh, you got Jerry Judy taking I call him Weeble Waddle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got, uh, I mean, guys left and right that can make plays. So it's been a fun um, season so far uh, to watch on offense. Um, Let me just add a little insight. I, I – I was excited about the year, uh, this year before we started, and being chaplain uh, and doing uh, – this is my 17th year as a chaplain. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that we really was focusing on uh, this year with our guys was growing in their character. Mm-hmm. Just truly – you know, when you watch championship teams, uh, championship teams have character. Yeah. That you can't win championships without it. And so uh, that's what we've been really encouraging our guys that, that come to our chapel, which are voluntary. Uh, and a lot of our guys that you see performing on Saturdays do come. One of them is Tua. But I watched Tua pregame Saturday. And as he came out, and to me, this is uh, it's the little things. Yeah. Uh, and they're again talking about character. And um, Tua comes out on the field and on the far sideline there's uh recruits there's family people there on the sidelines he starts about the 50 yard line and high fives everybody all the way down to the goal line wow. uh pre-game yeah and that just gives you a little insight on, on what type of person he is mm-hmm. that's awesome um man the kids i mean he's been getting so much praise and obviously um as you touched on man he he's not just a great football player but um he's a good kid as well so uh this weekend especially in the top 10 uh around the country uh <laughs> man there were some teams um uh, that were highly disappointed in their performances uh i'm gonna just touch on one of them um being georgia uh, coming in ranked number two, going to uh, Death Valley and playing <laughs> LSU. Man, I mean, I had Coach Smart. Uh, he was my secondary coach when I was at Alabama. Um, I like him. Uh, he's a great guy, he's a good coach. But, man, they they got to put to him uh, on Saturday, man. I, I did not see that coming. That was probably, the, I guess, the surprise. Um, if I had to choose Jesus one game, that was game. the most yeah. surprising to me is just how um, I don't want to take anything from LSU um, because they, I mean, they played a great game, but I did not see Georgia uh, going down like that. Well, one of the things I, I, I think people hadn't realized Georgia is a young team. Yeah. 
and to go into LSU and, and come out of there with a victory. We've, I've been there several times. Yeah. It's, it's a tough, tough place to play. Mm-hmm. And you can go to LSU and come out with a victory. So I think what you just saw this this weekend is just some of the youth that, that, that Georgia has in going into uh, an opposing place to play. I can remember my freshman year, <laughs> we were playing at LSU and – uh, there were so many people. It was a night game. There were so many people uh, crowded around our buses, and they literally started trying to tip our bus over. Like, I'm talking about that bad boy felt like it was up on two wheels at one time. And so, I mean, ever since then, you know, me coming from being 18, coming from Briarwood, Christian, uh, going to Death, <laughs> Death Valley my yeah. freshman year, man, it was it was kind of intimidating. I ain't going to lie. So going to Death Valley um, – and playing and coming out with a victory is no easy feat. Um, uh, Ohio State, ranked number three, they took care of business. Um, their quarterback, Haskins, has been playing. Uh, I mean, shoot, he's been putting up big numbers uh, week in and week out. Um, who was number four? Clemson. Clemson, Clemson had, a had a bye week. Yeah, okay. Clemson had a bye. Yep. Um, um, number five was Notre Dame. Okay. They beat they beat Pittsburgh, and that score is uh, nineteen fourteen. It was a close game. Yeah, um, I <laughs> I'm not gonna hate on Notre Dame, um, <laughs> but I know they I mean rank where they are, but I just don't. I think time will tell. Well, I think a lot of people think ranking. they'll end up being undefeated after getting past Pittsburgh. We well, just we know what happened see. last time they ended up uh, coming and playing Alabama, so I think it'll be a little bit more <laughs> the same, honestly. Well, our, our number six team uh, loss, that was West Virginia. Iowa State beat them. Uh, beat them 30-14. <laughs> Who? Iowa State. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Who was next? Uh, Washington. Washington. It was, several, well, it was upset oh, yeah. Saturday. It was. Uh, Washington lost to uh, to Oregon. Oregon in the overtime. Uh, was that 27-30? to 30? Yeah. 30-27. Uh, yeah. Um, then we had Penn State lose. Uh, they were at number eight. Yeah, Pitt, uh, Michigan State beat them. Yeah, Michigan State. Then we had Texas. Um, they were ranked number nine. They ended up beating Baylor uh, 23-17, I'm pretty sure. And then UCF, the national champs, um, squeaked out one 31-30 over Memphis. Hey, a win is a win. <laughs> but – like I said, we're going to see uh, as the season progresses um, where UCF ends up. Um, so that's kind of a little recap of uh, what you call the upset Saturday. Yeah. Um, a lot of teams, man. Um, oh, I think it'll be a long time before we see this many upsets on a Saturday. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to touch on our uh, friends uh, across the way. Um, who did they lose to? Tennessee? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, that's a tough loss. <laughs> a tough loss is right. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully, well, we'll just see how. But the you know what people don't realize that doesn't. Uh, uh, being around Jeremy Pruitt for the years he was defense coordinator at, at, at University of Alabama, yeah. I, I, I told people when he got went up, took the job, I said he's going to turn that program around, and uh, yeah. he's just. Uh, with the resources they have at the University of Tennessee and uh, just the tradition, man, I'm telling you, he, they're going to be a power. They're going to be power to reckon with in the East. And I think just uh, Coach Pruitt, I think he's about winning, uh, and he's going to make the tough decisions to get kids in there to uh, to win. And um, I mean, obviously, it was a big win for their program, as I think they had lost the previous eleven um, SEC games. So yeah. definitely uh, hats off to them, um, and that was a big win. Well, I'll tell program. you this about him: why he's going, why they're going to have a successful program. He's about developing young men. Yeah, he's developing young men, and so he's going to go out and recruit and bring and bring in young men that they'll be able to develop into champions, without a doubt. Um, speaking of Tennessee, <laughs> we played him next week uh, up in Knoxville. Um, how do you think? This one is gonna go bad. Well, we need we need all of our uh, bullets in the gun, so to speak, on offense <laughs> this week. I yeah. think we need to get out fast. Mm-hmm. We need to get out Which of the we've blocks. Which we been doing uh, pretty we, well. Yeah, season. we need to get out and score and just keep them off balance on defense and, and uh, be able to score, get put points on the board quickly, like we have been. 
and uh, take them out of their game plan. And so I think that if we can do that this week and two is healthy, we get Devontae Smith back. I, I don't know if he'll be back this week. I think he may have had a hamstring situation. But if we can get them back and get out quickly, then we can kind of get them quiet there in Knoxville. Well, that, I mean, I definitely agree with you. Uh, getting a fast start is going to be uh, key to just taking their crowd out of it. Um, and once we have our foot on the pedal, not taking it off. And I feel like the defensive line um, is going to be a big factor in this game. They've been playing well lately um, also. Um, and so if they can get uh, pressure on their quarterback, uh, he's a young kid, but he's been playing well. Um, so if we can get some pressure on him, I think that the tide will keep on rolling. Hey, we want to thank you for joining us here on our first episode. And uh, we went a little bit longer. Our future episodes will be between 15 to 20 minutes. Um, yeah, we, our apologies. Uh, like he said, they'll be a little bit shorter um, in the future, but we definitely want to thank you for tuning in to the first episode of Men of Steel, and we want to interact with you guys. So any comments, uh, questions that you have, and uh, prayer requests can be sent to Men of Steel. that's M-E-N-O-F-S-T-I-L-L-E-0-1 at Gmail. Um, and of course, we'll keep the prayer request anonymous. Um, but we definitely want to be lifting you guys up in prayer throughout the week. Takeaway. What's the takeaway? Both of us being defensive backs, uh, you, that your goal in the game is the interception, strip, fumble, whatever. What's yeah. the takeaway? Takeaway from this week is well, we had four teams in the top 10 that lost, correct? That's so, correct. Um, the takeaway from this week is never assume anything. You have to go into the game and do what it takes to win. You can't assume that the team isn't going to give their best effort, and you can't assume that the team is going to lay down. So the takeaway from this week is not to assume anything. And remember, you can always just get a little bit better. Also remember here at Men of Steel, we walk by faith, not by sight.